The Astros take two out of three from the Texas Rangers. The Braves are in town. Welcome back to another edition of Beyond the Diamond podcast. Brian Lima, Apollo Dez, producer Josh behind the camera. Sorry. Fellas, two out of three from the series uh, against the Rangers. Jose Altuve is on fire. Braves are in town. Obviously, they lost last night as we record this on Tuesday. But man, Friday night's game against the Rangers, pretty ugly. They chipped away a little bit late, but could not uh, get it done. They lose 12-8, and then they roll off two wins Saturday, Sunday. Jose Altuve had like a billion <laughs> hits <laughs> against the... What's Already? That? What? Breaking. What do you have breaking? Breaking. Source. Hold on, is this serious? Or are you fucking with us? This is real. Source. The Astros are calling up Force... Whitley, the number 17 pick of the no 2016 way. No way. draft. Like Forrest Whitley, like the mythical Michael creature? Michael Schwab, <laughs> breaking the news. Who? Michael Schwab. He's, he's still around? Forrest Chandler Whitley? Chandler Rome, tweeting Rome? right now. The Astros are calling up Forrest Whitley, a source tells The Athletic. Once baseball's top pitching pros- prospect, Whitley us? gets his first call up after he's enduring let me, let me a myriad of injuries. That's a good word there, Chandler. Good word. Whitley will work as a reliever for a bullpen that needed a fresh... Yep. Forrest Whitley. Forrest Whitley. Forrest Whitley. Holy the show. shit. I knew it. I said, buy all the stock, dude. I, I, to- I look like a genius. We said this, we said this on I mean, our preview. Th- let him throw an inning. <laughs> yeah, but still, we said this on Beyond the Diamond on our preview. We all agreed that this would be the year. It's either this year or no year. He's in the, the show, baby. He's Damn. a big leaguer. He's a big leaguer for the rest of his life. I want to say in like one of his starts for AAA Sugarland like a couple of weeks ago or last week, he hit like 98, didn't he? He's been yeah. running it no, up. He was yeah. pumping. He's been running it up. Yeah. Damn, Holy Forrest shit. Whitley finally getting the call up. I mean, I mean it, fucking 10 years can, later, but hey, we're here, baby. If he can find the zone, stuff plays. Hey. Well, that bullpen needs hey. an arm, that's for sure. He's has, he's that little little fuck you stank on his fastball. That's sometimes sometimes let's, that's what a team needs. Let's go. I mean, it may be hit a long way. He's I got mean, a it, don't crazy, throw to Acuna. He's got a crazy chip on his shoulder now. Oh wow. my gosh! Wow! Be, wow! Where Be, were you? <laughs> Where were you when Forrest Whitley got called up? This is a moment. This is up there with man walking on the moon. Allegedly. This is with uh, the Berlin Wall falling. This is where were you moment? <laughs> where were you moment? Let us know in the comments. Forrest like, Whitley. Mr. Brown. I'm really happy that, that I'm really happy that you brought up walking on the moon and the Berlin Wall and not 9-11. <laughs> I thought you were gonna I go. I didn't want to go dark. I thought you were I gonna did go. It. I did I did it. It. That's a where were you moment though. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. saying, unfortunately. Wow. Okay. So, All right, so what, Forrest Whitley. What are y'all's expectations for Forrest Whitley? Um two scoreless innings. You think he goes tonight? Probably. Oh yeah. We're, we're, Have you seen the, the big dog go? I bet. I bet he. I bet he. Uh, tandems, piggybacks. piggybacks. Hunter Brown. So is that where we are so with Hunter Brown? He's going to be like a starter. Hey, like whatever a, uh, takes the win. An opener. We're in the end game now. It's whatever <laughs> it takes. It. We're like. We're in the end game. Now. One scenario. What is that? Whatever. Uh, what is there's a movie. There was a movie um, that came out. It was a little four, indie, indie film. Yeah, it was an indie called? film called uh, Marvel's Endgame. And uh, indie film, yeah, it was yeah, indie. Yeah. It was at uh, cons, canes, cons, can yeah, con? it premiered there. Con? And then, um, very was small that a S- Sundance, yeah, they, they were at Sundance Sun- too. They okay. didn't win, South by Southwest. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got our movie film. expert here. I'm not listening to shit y'all say, Garrett. What watch is, movies, what, is, what are they watch talking movies. about? <laughs> Just don't even worry about it. Okay, <laughs> all right, <laughs> I'll, I'll all have right. some wherewithal and, well, and not talk movies. Back to where we were, okay. Uh, wow, good news. That's great. That's dude. awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Good for Forrest Whitley. Finally, I'm happy for the kid because he's gone through plenty of struggles. Gone through, he's gone People through. People question it for a long time. If y'all think about Forrest Whitley, that man was untouchable, untradeable. Him and Kyle Tucker both. Oh, yeah. A couple years ago. We drafted him. 2016, 20, dog. 2016. Wow. Eight years later. Good for you, Forrest Whitley. He's Finally been, getting the call up. He's been in the organization through everything, through everything. all of this. Wow. And he's he was the shot. anointed cho- chosen one. Check that out. To now, eight years later, to the show. Hey, technically, you're in, you're in the show. Technically, one of the few from from the cheating scandal era. You know. Also, like it is about damn time. Jeff Lunau stays winning. Yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> doesn't matter. I have one more. Dude, have one more shot left. Just <laughs> the guy just wins. The guy, he wins. We'll see. He's a winner. Wow. We'll see. Uh All right. It's about damn time. Yeah. Mm. Huh. Mm. Okay. So so he was already on the 40 man, so no one has to be somebody just has to be optioned. Yes. Who's got options yeah, left? Probably, probably uh probably Eric Getty, huh? Yeah, it's probably Eric Getty. Yeah. 
And hey, we'll jump into Spencer's starts. Yeah. Yeah, um, let's talk about him. Let's talk Rangers first. Sure. Friday night was at the stadium. Vibes at an all-time low. <laughs> and so South Oklahoma was putting it on us. But by the time I got to our fucking seats, it was I was like, oh, my God. We're, yeah, but that Tucker bat flip. That is where I, I put it in the blog. Underline that. That is when the boys kind of woke up. Yeah. They tried to hit Jordan, which is cur- – first off, fuck you. <clears throat> They were they uh, Adoles Garcia swipes a bag up nine three late in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they threw at Jordan. I was like, that should be the other way around. Like you should be throwing at Adoles up nine three, and you're and you're trying to swipe a bag. They What's, throw they throw at Jordan. Tucker hits a bomb. Let's Brock Burke. Yeah, Brock Burke. That's such yeah. Punched that's, the wall after <laughs> the game and broke his hand. What an idiot. That's such what like a, a loser. <laughs> what an idiot. What idiot. Idiot. Loser. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Swiping bags Brock up Burke nine sounds to three. like a name that he like. Hey, my dad's a lawyer. Brock Burke. Oh, oh yeah. Dude. I'll get my dad. Total I'm gonna frat, get my bro. dad on this. Yeah, you, you know, know my dad, dad is. You know my dad is. I'm suing your ass. Um Kyle, uh, Kyle Tucker let him know about Yeah. That. He he Yeah, when have you he, ever seen Kyle Tucker stare you don't, at him? You don't you don't see never. that often, if ever. Yeah, and they threw inside to Jordan like three times in a row and then finally and then hit finally him. Finally hit him, yeah. <laughs> like what the fuck? Yeah. Um, I didn't know Adoles I didn't know Adoles Garcia could steal bags like that, dude. You know how many steroids and juiced up he is? <laughs> like that's a lot of weight to carry around. It's all right here in his cram- he cranium, dude. The calves. Oh, my man, my. dude. I'm telling you, dude, that guy is juiced out of his mind. He hits the shit out of the baseball. He though. does, doesn't he? Golly, I need those steroids because jeez Louise. Yeah, Adoles, you got any extra steroids, bro? Uh, and then the Astros decided to take control of the series. That Ronald Blanco pitches his ass off once again. again. Like I've, I'm at the point where, and I was the first one. And if you're, if the first time you're ever like wa- hearing us, watching us, like this year, welcome. First of all, welcome. I was very, and everyone knows if there's, who's been around knows I was wrong on this. I w- always waited for the shoe to hit. Like what's the saying? The, to the, drop. To drop with you, Zach you Greinke. Want, you want the shoe to to drop? Yeah, I was always waiting for that. Like yeah. with Zach Greinke, I was like, oh my god, like this is not gonna last. Like. And then his entire tenure, yeah. he figured out a way. In the back of my mind, that same thought has been there with Renal Blanco, where I'm just like, I mean, these big leaguers are going to eventually know that he's going to throw change-ups. Yeah. Second time around facing the Rangers, I'm like, they're going to be on the change-up. They were on the change-up the first, the first round through the lineup. Second time through, fastballs up, sliders, fastballs up, sliders. He adjusted. He made an in-game adjustment. Yeah. And all of a sudden, boom, six innings. Granted, he didn't get the win. He gave us We well, only gave up two, right? Yeah, gave yeah. up two. And that was in the first inning. Went five scoreless after that. Yeah. Gave up depth when we needed the, after the worst week ever. I think we gave up 46 runs in four games or whatever it was. Yikes. Um, yeah. He gave us depth, gave it to the bullpen. The Ashes put up a crooked number. Now we're up 9-2, and the vibes were at all-time high. Next day, Christian Javier comes out. Is it too early to say 2022 Christian Javier's back? Like, I don't think so. With the changeup? I mean, we, that's another thing that we talked about coming into this season is he, like, for me, he was my X factor. Like, he was a dude that they have to have perform in order to get back to the ALCS. And one thing that we hit on was how he came in after losing weight in the offseason in way better shape. And so far, his couple outings, he's been really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. He's looked great. Him and Ronel Blanco have been the bright spots in the rotation. Oh, I mean, so yeah, they're, 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 it's, it's, it's them two and everyone else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I don't like, think it's far to say. I said they're ace one and two. I mean, oh. they're, they're who JV and Framer were supposed to be going into the season. Yeah, you get those two back. Now you, you, have a, you have a pretty good four. Do you all find it odd that Frommer didn't get an MRI? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I'm not accusing the man no, of anything. I, I'm, I'm not speculating, I, when but... We talked about it. I you said, are the ace of the staff. <laughs> you have an elbow injury, a forearm tightness or, or elbow tightness. Especially we we diagnosed it, right? We diagnosed it right on here on Beyond we the did. Diamond. And I did say, I think we'll get good news. And you don't get an MRI? Now he's back? It's weird. It's not, huh. like you, it's not like you can't afford it. It's not like he's worried about the medical bill. Yeah, well... Just get the MRI. Huh. All right, well, he's back, and he needs to pitch his ass off because he owes about 10 guys steak dinners for uh, putting guys in rough spots. Yeah, I mean, that was a domino that fell that, that, oh, yeah. that 
ruined the last week and a half almost. Yeah, I just you know, I just want to get y'all's take on it. I just thought it was a little odd. A little weird. A little, a little weird. Odd. Can we talk weird. about Jose Altuve? Oh, dude. <laughs> What's there? Jose Altuve, I think on Saturday had four hits, three hits, whatever it was. Sunday, three more hits, couple bombs. I mean last night he had three more hits. Just a casual four through average, four seventy six OBP. Like 722 seven something. Slugging. Yeah, it's almost it? a 1200 OPS. Yeah, I mean, let's. I mean, 72 at bats. We're getting up there in the good sample size area too. Do you, Strong. <laughs> do you know what uh, the MLB record for hits in a season is? Uh, man, is it over? Was three? it done? Was it done after 1990? Ichiro. I was about to think. I was going to say Ichiro. 2001. Is it over 300? 262. Close. By Ichiro. Wow. Altuve. Currently on pace for 261. Wow. I don't think he can. I don't think he has that. In the <laughs> hey, bag. we're gonna we're Dude, gonna, gonna have man. a dialogue. We're gonna start a dialogue. Greatest season ever. Look, and you can we can do the the magic of editing. I said it. Is it every every time we think Jose Altuve can only do so much and he's done so many great things? Us as a fan base want more and expect more yeah. out of this guy and yet time and time again he does it and i said it is this a year where he could be an mvp and i think i even talked about the odd i think it, like i named like three other guys he was tied with on the mvp odds um yeah mvp <laughs> mvp and it's crazy because we have six wins and he's the mvp of baseball yeah. right now remember in 2020 when he had that awful short season yeah and everybody mm. wrote him off as like he's washed he's done his OPS is in years since then, 839, 920, 915, and then now 1,200. Wow. I mean, from his injury he's still there. post-WBC, when he, when he came back after missing all those games, yeah, he was on pace for, if you like. He had a really good season. After that. Formulated across 162. It was, a, it was a crazy high. I think his war had been close to nine or something crazy. Um, but, yeah, the guy just... He's so good at baseball. Yeah. He's so freaking good at baseball. He'll get 3,000 hits. I think, I think, I think he, he's going to play until he gets that 3,000 hit. And I, I don't think the conversation of just baseball fans, no one's like all these regular, like, you know, like Miggy getting to 500, right? It was 500 for Miggy. Yep. Yeah. I don't runs. know. Like, I think Stan's the next closest active player to 500. Yeah. Uh, all these different metrics for players to potentially get in the hall of fame that you get you get kind of these check marks yeah. you, you're, you're kind of a shooter. you're an automatic right, right? Uh, no one's calculating that that 2020 season of only 60 games hurt all these players yeah. records like yep. record chasing and and yep. really put ties one hand behind the back across across the league altuve i was like in my mind we're all doing the math in the off season blah 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 he may get to 3,000 way quicker than we thought because with this start and he adds, you know, a crazy MVP type year. He only has to be average to good the next three or four to get yeah. there. And he's gonna not, I think he's gonna be average to fucking superstar status that we expect him to be. Like Yeah, I don't I don't see the I, the wheels of the train slowing down yeah. no. any moment. I think the crazier thing when we talk about some of those like uh milestones you have to hit to get into the Hall of Fame, we might not see another pitcher win 300 games oh yeah no verlander i think is the he's got the most wins of active pitchers and i think he's still like 60 wins away yeah he's cl the closest and and he's still i think him and max are like yeah they're always like alternating between stars and then 3,000 hits might be another thing that we don't see as often mm. which is crazy to think about mm. because what do, what does everybody love these days it's the long ball it's home runs yeah. obviously I think if we really dug in the statistics, it's a lot of home runs or strikeouts. I mean, who's outside of Jose Altuve here locally? Who's another guy that just pounds out base hits after base hits? Locally? No, just in. I'm saying. I mean, that. Luis Arise might be like the closest. Yeah, guy he hits. Say who well, he almost. He, Dan Anderson singles. 400. Yeah. Last for year. Seven months. Yeah, for seven months. But yeah, yeah. He, he didn't do it. Like he had a flash in the pan cap kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. I, I mean, Ronald Acuna Jr. I mean, you have Acuna, a Soto, yeah, a Soto Bobby, probably a Bobby Witt Jr. Who's oh, dude, Bobby Witt. Bobby I'm Witt such Jr. A is a good. I think I'm he's such a, a fan of Bobby Witt Jr. Oh my god, that kid is unbelievable, man. Mm. He is uh, so good. But I'm just saying, 3,000 hits is going to be something that we 
It'll be probably down it's the road to watch milestone. again. It'll be where were you moment. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I think yeah. Jose Altuve gets there, though. I really do. Yeah, and I think it's a lot sooner than yeah. what we kind of calculated because I just think <clears throat> the way <laughs> – I think the home runs he had off of Valdi – Obviously, he owns Evaldi. Like you just you was he got seven <laughs> against them, eight, eight against them. I think eight like now. Eight now. Uh, there's just guys you own. Yeah. And those weren't bad pitches from Nate Evaldi. It was 96 a foot above the zone, and somehow Altuve out his eyes can get his barrel to it. And, and yeah, the first one was just kind of, you know, Minute Maid Park being Minute Maid Park, but getting to it. That second one, barrel to it. See ya. Like why? They're not bad pitches, and he. He just his coverage is insane. Why would you throw Jose Altuve a fastball? I think because you have Jordan behind him. But you know Jose Altuve is a hunts fastballs, ambushes fastballs. If I'm a big league pitcher, first pitch of the game, I'm, I'm throwing him a changeup or I'm throwing him a slider. I'm, <laughs> I'm not throwing him a first pitch fastball. I, oh yeah, I'm not doing it because he will attack a fastball all day. Whether he hits a home run, flies out, grounds out, he's going to attack a fastball on the first pitch. Yeah. I mean, but the issue is when he's on it like he is right now, he can still wait back yeah. on that and, and hit it. It's, it's, there's almost no winning. I think you know that last night against the Braves, there was a sequence where uh, Vines, right? Vines was the pitcher? Yeah, no, Vines Vines. Started. It was his last at-bat of the game, the one I'm talking about. I don't know who. Oh, no, yeah, it was that long-haired, uh, the righty, who yeah, threw, yeah. 80, he threw 81% Johnson. curveballs. Johnson. Yeah. Uh, I think he layered in eight or nine curveballs and then slipped 96 up in the zone. <laughs> and Altuve still fouled it And back. Altuve still fouls it off. He yeah. saw eight straight disgusting curveballs that he battled, fought off, spit yeah. on. And then the guy was like, I'm going to sneak this top rail 96 right here. Great pitch. I mean, like, great tunnel, great pitch. Oh, most, and all, most people are, are whiffing oh, at that yeah. and walking well, to the dugout. Most people are frozen by it. You're yeah. walking to the dugout before the umpire even rings you up. Altuve just fouls it right off. Yeah. Ends up getting a base hit right up the middle on, on a, on a curveball. Like, I don't think people realize, one, how hard it is to do what these guys do day in and day out. But he makes it look so, yeah. so easy. Yeah. So easy. And we're lucky. We're lucky we have him because he's leading the offense in a, in a big way. Yeah, I'm going to be uh, – I'll be in attendance when they dedicate that statue to him outside oh of Midway Park. I, I'm, I may cry. He, as an old man, I may cry. He will go down me. as the best Astro of all time. 100%. I said that multiple times on this 100%. podcast, and I'll say it again because he continues to do what we have grown accustomed for him to do. Like, we got to think about as fans how spoiled we have been to watch Jose Altuve in his career. Like, you think about, like, when we were younger and we watched Jeff Bagwell – we watched Craig Biggio, right, and the things that they did. And then for the older generation, they watched Nolan Ryan when he was an Astro, Mike Scott, and you can go down the list of all the legends that played here in this city. Think about what we have got to witness with Jose Altuve. How many big moments? I think, how I many, think he's the, be uh, the best Astro already. Uh, he is. Yeah. He is. And, and who's to say you could build a statue right now and put it outside of Minute Maid Park because you know he's going to continue to do what he's, what he's going to do, right? But you got to think about all the big moments, all the consistency, you never hear anything negative come out of his mouth. He's great with the fans. You see what he did last night? He brought a kid onto the field that was wearing an Altuve jersey, signed his ball, signed his jersey, talked to him for like four or five minutes during BP, and then he had Jeremy Pena come over and sign the kid's jersey for him as yeah. well. Like, and you know what's even cooler he is, about He's that? like a man of the people. You don't, he's one of the best teammates, I guarantee you. You ask everybody in that clubhouse or anybody that's ever played with Jose Altuve, he will go down as the best teammate they've ever had. A thousand percent. And, and when, when all the cheating stuff came out, he took that shit right on the chin, even though he did not participate in it. Constant he said, we, 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 we guy. We, we. A little oh, French there. A lot of we's over there. Yeah, I know. A lot of we's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Big we guy. I so I think we're spoiled yeah, as, we fan, are, as a fan base to be able to watch him perform and watch him do it year in and year out. Yeah. Yeah. So, Agreed. all right, let's uh, let's look uh, I want to I want one thing I want to hit on is the back end of the bullpen. Last <sighs> do we, night do we have to another rough outing for Josh Hader. I think he's got over a 9 ERA and 8 appearances now for the Astros. I'll first say he's not going <laughs> to pitch like this for the rest of the year. Like he's no, going to figure it out. There's no way. He's got over a 9 ERA in 8 appearances as an Astro. 
And I also, I'll say by, I'll say this as we start this segment, he's not going to continue to pitch like this, right? Like yeah. he's not going to have rough outings for the rest of the year. I think there's some things that they've got to get figured out, but man, it's been ugly so far. Let's just call it like it is. It's been ugly. And another thing that I want to discuss is last night he comes in, it's a two to one ball game in the bottom of, or excuse me, the top of the ninth against the Braves. You're trying to hold that lead. I understand why you want to go to your closer. However, he had just pitched on Sunday. He's not your freshest arm. Ryan Presley hadn't pitched since Friday. Why is Ryan Presley not pitching in that moment? Joe Espada said after the game, Josh Hader had he, he was Josh Hader was his freshest arm. Well, that's not true. Yeah. Ryan Presley hadn't pitched since Friday, and unless he was unavailable, which nobody still still nobody knows, it was never made public that he was unavailable. Yeah. And usually before the game, the media gets a hold of that information. It yeah. was not said. Was, so was where weird. was Ryan Presley last night? It was weird. I this is this is where I don't I didn't like what Joe did last night just because and to to Monday quarterback it but the Astros did a really good job last night making the Braves use their high leverage arms. They mm -hmm. had to run out Blummer, they had to run out excuse me Blummer, they had to run out Mincer, they had to run out Johnson and you were about to face their closer too if you got to the top, the, excuse me, the bottom of the ninth before the whole ninth inning happened. You had an opportunity where you could, you could have gone pressy, you could have, and that now you have Hater for tonight. Like you just kind of pigeonholed yourself. Now Hater's not available tonight after right. back to back days, so you have to you're gonna go pressy tonight in the ninth. Uh, a Brayu maybe Brayu was ran two days in a row. Or Saturday, you did Saturday. Now Monday, like you, you just kind of jumbled your back in, and I don't know. Yeah, it's it's, dude. It's I'm miffed at it. I really have no idea. And I get it. Like, when are you going to pitch Josh Hader? Because there hasn't been a lot of save opportunities, hundred percent. But yeah, he went Saturday. He pitched Saturday, Abreu. So you have. It was weird because he looked so dominant on Sunday again when he had to come in to get Seager. He just said, here's 97, try to hit it as far mm -hmm. as you can. Good morning, good yeah, afternoon, good night. Yeah, to be fair, it was only four pitches. So Where I'm upset in the sequence of the ninth inning is Yanir cannot get handcuffed. You cannot give up a pass ball yeah. in that situation. Runner on first, you have, you have a, your closer on the mound. He's a ground ball away from getting out of it. You, you can't get handcuffed. You're the one calling pitches. You know what's coming. You can't get handcuffed. Ball bounces off the pad, gets away, runner to second base. So now you have your middle infield who was in double play depth. Now Payne is now shading into the gap to, to make sure nothing gets past the five hole where a CNI single will score a run. He's now playing his new position. What does baseball do? It finds you. Finds the hole. Baseball finds the hole exactly yeah. where Jeremy Pena was lined up for a double play. And we're not even talking about this. So it's frustrating that laziness or baseball happening where you get handcuffed you that guy gets 90 feet good teams and great teams find a way to make that hurt and what did the braves do they made it fucking hurt yeah he walked one gave up four straight hits little little i don't think the x kilo was that long i feel like, like for the, that's the story of the astros this whole season they've rarely been burned by the home run it's yeah it's been these i think the only home run was soto yeah, I mean that right? was the only like like gut wrenching like, home late run. In it, yeah, it's just all been these seeing eye singles, double down the line. That's what's hurt us more than anything. Yeah, it's uh, baseball. And, and look, <laughs> yeah. the, one guy I do want to give roses to, this peripherals may say otherwise, Rafael Montero. Oh, yeah, he's, he's come pitched out well. He, I mean, look, this year. he's he was he was a punching bag all last year. If you look at his stats, he had a really bad year, like half of a bad year, and then a good year. It is two years we've had him. It's been one and a half of. Good production. Obviously, oh. the the why? I mean, we should be mad at Bagwell in the front office about the contract. I'm not mad at Rafael Montero for he'd be. What is he supposed to say no to that money? Yeah, he's no, supposed to say no to he got a life changing he, generational money. You know, doing like, that's not his fault. That yeah, that oh, dude, team we've always it. we've always said go get the bag. Yeah. So obviously, the results aside, that bad stretch he had is more magnified. But if you look at it from the thirty thousand foot view of the two years, one and a half has been pretty solid, and he's started off this season. Him and Seth Martinez are the best bullpen arms. I was gonna say, yeah, I was gonna say we got to give flowers to Seth Martinez and, and, you know, and Taylor, Brandon B. Like they've Taylor thrown two thousand pitches. Do you Taylor know how Scott many? Has a one eight, one eight nine year. Uh, I'm a big Taylor Scott guy. Do you know how many innings Seth Martinez has already thrown, thrown in this season no. in eighteen games? 
<laughs> 200? I don't know. It feels a lot. He's already appeared in 11 innings. That's a shit ton. In 18 games. That's, as a reliever. Yeah. That's not uh, ideal. That's two not, starts. Dude. It's not he's, ideal. He's appeared in 11 innings. Hunter Brown through three starts, seven and two-thirds innings. Wow. Wow. So good for Seth Martinez. He's pitched well. I mean, the story of our bullpen is, is clearly the big three. Most of the, the what we thought was going to be the issue, all the middle relief guys have pitched pretty well so right. far. It's the big three. If the big three perform how we thought they were going to perform, the Astros probably have three or four more wins yeah. than they do. I, so. I, yeah, and I never would have thought it would be Brian Abreu, Ryan Presley, and Josh Hader that we would be talking about. Yeah, yeah they're the problem. <laughs> I mean, and that's the good thing is that's not going to be the issue yeah. all season. I don't think anybody yeah. expects yeah. – any of those pitchers to be bad all year. Seth Martinez had five swing and misses yesterday. Rafael Montero, six. Josh Hader, four. Um, mm. And they stretch out. They made Montero almost go two full innings. He, he got up there. I think he was at 35 pitches. He did pitches. the thing. He kept us in he it. He kept us in it. Yeah. Uh, Bray came in, got the out. I think Olsen hit it like 104, 105 miles an hour at Altuve. Yeah. Uh, but I want to talk about Spencer and Getty real quick. I don't know how many – times he has left in this rotation with Framber and Verlander coming back. He might be uh, being sent down currently. Yeah, he may be sent down on this on this Whitley news. Uh, I like the kid a lot. Uh, he kind of has that moxie to him, that that top end kind of swagger where like you're going to you may get me but I'm going to get you most of the time. Mm -hmm. 15 swing and misses last night. Uh, if it wasn't for Ronald Cunha Jr. fouling off 20 pitches in his two at bats, the pitch count would have been way down. Obviously, he had the error by Pena slash Abreu. I don't know what, what you really want to pin it on. Um, he pitched his tail off. And obviously, it was only four innings. Yeah, but 87 pitches through four. I, I think if you take the two stats, the, excuse me, the two starts between Kansas City and Atlanta, the average exit velo off him had to be like 87 miles. Yeah, it was all soft like contact. Like all soft contact. Yeah, also, I think one thing that uh, I saw from him last night is he got himself in the, ahead of hitters, but yet he just didn't have the out pitch, mm. right? So the, the out pitch just wasn't there for him last night. But the stuff that he has so far that I've seen in two starts, and again, small sample size, we know that. Yeah. I think he's got the stuff to, and the moxie, like you said, to to be a, a frontline guy for the Astros somewhere down the road. For sure. I would assume he's going to be the one that gets sent down. Yeah. But I think that's a, you're, you nailed it with the out yeah. pitch. I, I think that was his biggest problem, and that's something that, that's something that can easily easily be developed. Yeah, you develop that. That's, for that's sure. something that the you know we see him more. Yeah. Our guys work with him more, and and they develop what that out pitch is and how to use it the correct way. Yeah. And yeah, he's a front line guy down the road. Yeah. This is kind of the the story of yesterday's game. Austin Riley. This is just the ninth inning. One hundred and five point four off Hater. Ninety four point two, uh, Ozzy. Ronald Cunha. Ninety eight point two. Orlando Arsene, 99.4, all off Austin Riley, right? Or excuse me, off Josh Hader. The Astros outs, 103.6 ground out by Alex Bregman. 102.6 miles per hour, Kyle Tucker, fly out. Jeremy Pena, 102.0, line out. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's just time and time again when you pull up these stats, these hard hit balls by the Astros are just – Line outs and ground outs, and it's going to change. It's going to eventually even out. Hundred point five from Chas McCormick, fly out. Uh, Jordan Alvarez, one hundred eight point zero miles per hour off the bat, double play. <laughs> yeah. So like baseball's a bitch. Baseball sucks. Baseball sucks. <laughs> baseball sucks. Baseball is a beautifully, is a beautiful, brutal game. It's going to turn. It's going to fucking turn. Baseball yeah, well. sucks. Well, the good thing is we have two games left with the Braves, and then after that, this gauntlet of a first few series of the season is over, Yeah, and we get into some easier games. Yeah, then you got a month yeah. and a half. Then Nationals, you gotta fucking, Cubs. Then you got to go and run. Yeah, they, Nationals, Cubs, imperative. Rockies. So if it's gonna turn, going to turn, yeah. now is the time to turn <clears> and rattle off a 10-game streak somewhere in this next month. Yeah. And look – the Astros can very well take two, the next two from the Braves. They probably should have taken one last night. You take two tonight, the boys will be vibing going into this, this stretch. Like, yeah. just win tonight. You win tonight, anything can happen in a day game in Minute Maid Park. Yep. You going? 
Shit, yeah, dude. I'm not missing a day game. The juice Gary, box. you going? <laughs> We're there. You going? Uh, uh, no. Wow. Dude, you just killed the vibe, just dude. Killed the vibe. <laughs> I was about, I had to Band ask Josh. brothers was running some time, dude. <laughs> I had to ask Josh. Are you going? Uh, I'll be there. Okay. You, you guys meet up at St. Arnold's or you what? Going? Huh? You, you, you going? going? Uh, no. <laughs> How would I be there? I get up at 4 a.m., boys. Games yeah, at 1. Dave is a perfect know, time for you to go. Games. I That's need a nap. Games you can meet, you can make I need a nap. No free ads, but I'm very worried about Garrett consuming all this Celsius. Like, so <laughs> very worried. Like, I'm putting this just out there oh, for you to so drink. Know. He oh, drink, I thought that was a We don't have boy. any water. In the, if you, hey, we're in a new office. If you want us, you know, send us some, like, waters and maybe, like, a fridge. <laughs> we got any, any any sparklet reps out there? Sparklet water? Like, because that's cheap all water. we have right now is, like, 12 Celsius. Celsius, and he's drinking them, like, we have water in the office. <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem. And no one said anything. Who's Stanley is that? That's mine. What are you, a basic white girl? There's a lot of fluid ounces. I can just fill How it many up. ounces are that? Like 200, I think. 200 ounces? <laughs> I don't think it's 200. 200. I think it's 64, isn't okay, it? Okay, still. So it's like two quarts. What? <laughs> it's a lot. Do you know how many ounces is in the quart? 32. Look it up. Look it up, Mr. Google. <laughs> Survey says... 32 U.S. fluid ounces. Bam! So you said how many? <laughs> what are you, Mike Breen? Bang! <laughs> well, you did say 64, and then you said two quarts, so you're both right. So we're the same. Yeah, but then he challenged me about how many ounces were in a quart. He did, he did challenge. He did challenge. Yeah, I just want to make sure you know. Because you know, you used to do like you used to do the Q's and the P's and the, how many in the gallon. Mm -hmm. That's how I memorized. So that's 200 ounces in your 64 ounces. That's 64, 64 ounces. ounces. You know who else has 64 ounces of beer Damn, and multiple you're, glasses? You're good at this. Who, who do you you're think? Who do you think I'm going to say? You're good at this. Who is it? You're good at it, dude. Yeah? Big City Wings. There it is. <laughs> dude, you're, that's, that got cold that beer. That is a professional, yeah. ladies that and gentlemen. That got cold beer. That is a professional. <laughs> <laughs> that is, wow. Uh, Houston's wing joint, Apollo's wing joint. Uh, crawfish, National Crawfish Day is Wednesday. This today, that's tomorrow. Okay. Um, we're filming on Tuesday, go, go so go out. Game. I think it's nine dollars a pound. Don't quote me on that. Look it up at BigCityWings.com. But they have a new limited time offer menu: uh, jalapeno wings, the crawdaddy wings, new fries, bang bang craw crawfish fries, dumpster fries, new desserts, um, funnel cake fries. That's actually game changing with a little ice cream on top, and two new sandwiches: blue cheese bacon burger and a Texas pulled pork sandwich with four new limited time. Uh, drinks as well. So go to bigcitywings.com to find the nearest Big City Wings near you. And Space Cadet, we call it the Alamo. We were there for a watch party. Go on the north side on North Main. Um, tell them Apollo sent you and get some. They have Fiesta Fridays. They have their chef is from Blue Dorn. If you haven't looked up Blue Dorn, look it up. They have brisket from Pinkerton's on their freaking loaded fries. So good. Go to Space Cadet um, on the north side. And if you're in Edo, head over to Big City Wings for pre- and post-game uh, shenanigans. So, yeah. All right. Thank you for watching and listening to the Beyond an Oven podcast. I'm Josh. That's Dez and Brian. we got Garrett with the Celsius over there. We will see you next time. Peace. Ashes Peace. win the next two. Ashes win the next two. Love you guys. Okay. That's when we go. Yeah, okay. Wow. All right. He's just preparing for. I'm just ready, man. You know, I've just never had that lunch, so I'm excited. And it's going to be free. <laughs> there's, no, I mean, there's almost no way you're going to hit it now. Dude, <laughs> I'm going to fucking not, figure it out. Have to flip. Move your foot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to figure it out. He's going to figure it Are out. Are we recording? Yeah. Thank God.